Okay. We've been doing everything interactively here at the prompt. I'm going to exit and switch over to an editor because what you really do when you're writing programs is write them in files. You might work interactively when you're exploring data. Tools like R and MATLAB are very good for this. Write a command, write a command, run this, see what the graph looks like, do a few simple operations. It's a very productive way to program. But sooner or later, you find yourself rewriting the same five or six lines every single time you want to do something. It's time to create larger blocks of code. So, I'm going to write a program called total, and I'm going to say total is zero for n in range 10. Total is total plus n, and then print total. Let's save this as total.py. Now, your editor may or may not colorize the text. The one I'm using, it's called Emacs, does. When variables are first created, they show up in that orange brown. Keywords show up in that bluish purple, or pinkish purple, depending on your eyes. I've saved this in a file called total.py. I'm switching back to the shell, and there's my file. How do I run it? I say, I, Python, I want you to run what's in that file. Okay? And it prints out a message, and then it gives me whatever the output from the program is. Now, I could just use a plain old Python interpreter, and it would just run the program, and it doesn't print the little end thought header. So when I'm running from the shell, I will just say Python, and then run my program. Python goes off, reads commands from the file, and executes them. Just as when we saw earlier, you can take shell commands and put them in a file and say, bash, please run this. Just as you can take SQL commands and put them in a file and run that. All right. This program works, but it could be better. In particular, I could add a comment. Add up the first 10 numbers starting at 0. Or, even better, add up the numbers 0 to 9. Okay, that works fine. I've now got a program with a little note at the top telling me what it does. It's not a particularly useful program, but we're getting places. Let's switch back here. If I go up one level in the shell, I've got the data files that I was using earlier. Let's copy data steve2012.txt to this directory. Now just as dot dot means the directory above, dot means this directory here. So I've now got the file steve2012.txt. And by the way, please ignore total.py tilde. That's just a backup file for my editor. If I take a look at that file, there we go. There's an ID line, and then it is the header and the data, all my species observations. What I'm going to do is write a simple program that will add up the total number of creatures that were seen and recorded in this file. It's the simple data processing that you might do in any number of different applications. So, let's switch back and create a new program called countfish.py. First thing we write is the explanation of what we're doing. All right, add up the number of creatures in a data file. And I say file name is, and I called it steve2012.txt. Hmm. Now I need a way to read data out of a file. Now, in something like MATLAB, or if I'm using the NumPy library for Python, I can just say read this comma-separated value file. It's one function called read a matrix. But I'm going to show you how to build up to something like that, because it's a good way to introduce a few of the tools that we need. Let's start with a simpler case. I'm going to delete the line that has the file's identity, its provenance, and the title line, because they need special handling. And I'm just going to write this as temp.txt. So, switching back to the shell, my temporary file has just data lines. Every single line is uniform. I date, comma, species name, comma, a number. All right. Let's change this for the moment 
to temp.txt. Now if I want to open a file, funnily enough, the function is called open. So I say my reader, my data source, is open that file in read mode. Now again, I can call this variable anything. I could call it source, I could call it xyz, but I want to give variables meaningful names to make the program easier to understand. I want to refresh the reader's short-term memory so that as she is going through the program, she can see a variable and go, right, that's called reader, that reminds me that this is where I'm reading. If I call it XYZ, that doesn't trigger any association in short-term memory. So, reader is open, that's the function, I give it a file name, I could equally well just put the file name in there like that. And the second argument, see the comma separating the two arguments, is R for read. If I want to create a file, I would use W for write, but it would immediately clobber any data that was in that file if it already existed. Now, I can then say for line in reader, and I will print the line, and then I will close the file. For the moment, I'm just going to print out the contents of the file. Well, what am I doing here? I'm opening the file with the open function, it's built into Python, and I'm assigning the result of open to a variable called reader. That's called a handle. It's a connection between my program and the file on disk. It's like an open phone line. Now we've seen for loops before. For the loop variable that will get assigned one part of a collection after another in hmm, the collection that I'm using is an open file. What Python will do is give me back each line of the file in turn. For, a for loop's job is to give me the pieces of something, and the sensible pieces of a text file are the lines of the text file. Now, the authors of Python could have said that a for loop over an open file will give you back the characters one by one. Probably less useful. They could have said it will give you back a hundred bytes each time. Also, probably not useful. A text file looks like a set of lines, so that's what Python gives us. I'm just going to print the lines for now. We'll worry about how we get parts out of them later. And then when I'm done, I need to close my file. That's the program's way of telling the operating system, I'm done with this. So that if some other application wants to open the file and write to it, or if we want to move the file elsewhere, the operating system knows that we don't have several people trying to manipulate the same file at once. So, Python, I want you to run countfish.py. If we've done everything right, it will print out each line in turn. And it does. Except it's printing out blank lines. Hmm, why is that? Well, let's go back and take a look at our data file. What we see in the editor is a line of characters, another line of characters, and another line of characters. What's actually stored is a bunch of characters and then a special character called a new line. It means here's the end of line. Then we store another bunch of characters and then another special character, another new line. We need something in the file that tells tools like editors when to break the line. And the way we do that is we put in a new line character. So when I read a line from a file, I am getting the string 2012-08-29, M-A-R-L-I-N, 3, new line. I'm getting the new line at the end of the string. But if I take a look at the print statement in Python, if I print 3, it's actually printing 3 and a new line. Print, in order to be polite, gives you what you asked for, and then prints a new line so that your next bit of print output will come on a separate line. So I'm now getting two new lines. I'm getting one new line that's in the string I read from the file, and another new line that's being added to it by print, so I get my first string, a new line, and then another new line. That's why I'm getting blank lines. Okay, how do I fix this? I want to get rid of the blank lines. Well, I could say 
temp is line, please strip off any leading or trailing spaces, tabs, new lines, carriage returns, other blank characters. I'm asking the line to do this. That's what the dot notation means. Open is just a function. It's not attached to anything. But strip is what's called a method. It belongs to whatever the variable line is currently pointing at. So I'm asking whatever line is pointing at, my string of text, to go and strip off stuff from itself and give me back the result. Most things in Python are not pure functions. They don't just sit by themselves. Most are attached to data so that you ask the data, please go and do this for me. Here, I'm asking the line to strip off leading and trailing white space and give me back the result. And then I can print out that result. Okay, let's see if that worked. Excellent. I'm no longer getting the double new lines. All right, let's switch back. Do I actually need to assign to a variable temp and then print that? No. I could just print line.strip. I ask the line to strip off leading and trailing spaces, tabs, new lines, carriage returns, and so forth. The value comes back and I immediately print it. I don't have to store it in a temporary variable. Let's see if that's true. Okay. I made one small change and I immediately checked. That way, if my change was mistaken, I know what to look at. We have plenty of experimental data to show that the more frequently you check, the less total checking you have to do. And this might be counterintuitive, but the idea that if I write code for three hours, I'm then going to be debugging for three. But if I write code for five minutes, I'll then only debug for one minute. Then I'll write for five and debug for one, write for five and debug for one. I wind up spending more of my time writing and less debugging. Checking as you go along gets you there faster. And it's a difficult habit to get into for some people. It certainly was for me. But it makes programming more productive.